Hello everyone, my name is Radmir Kvansio and head of research at Quantpedia and welcome back to our video. Today I would like to continue our discussion about volatility hedging or using VIX as a signal to time the market, but not S&P 500 or SPI, but uh, volatility market. Our article draws inspiration from the volatility edge dual approach to VIX ETNs for trading from Carlos Zaratini, Andrew Aziz and Antonio Mele. And if you remember approximately two weeks ago, we discussed how to use the idea from that paper to trade leverage ETFs. So we discussed that there is a volatility drag in the leverage ETFs and it makes sense to use the signal from the paper to trade triple leverage ETFs. But in this article I would like to move back to volatility trading. So once again we will draw inspiration from the volatility edge paper. But instead of timing double or triple leverage ETFs we will try to build long volatility hedge for our portfolio. Let's move on. So we are trading or we are using the VIXI which is Pro shares VIX short-term futures ETF as a primary hedging instrument. So this ETF is holding VIX futures. So it's very good hedge in times when the market is in the strong drawdown or a very fast correction. But it's not a very good idea to hold this ETF for a long time because you are losing the money. Unlock the power of Quantpedia Pro with over 900 premium strategies extracted from 100,000 research papers and more than 30 quant reports. Model full portfolios generate real-time reports and save hours of work. Quantpedia Pro, your edge in quantitative investing. VIX futures are very often in the contango and when those futures roll from month to month you are losing the money. So we are using the VIX only for a short period of the time or VIXI for the short period of time when we want to hedge our portfolio. And our portfolio will be built from S&P 500. So this is our core equity exposure and we will try to find a way how to hedge this core equity exposure. We will use CBOE volatility index, VIX index, uh, which is very known as a fear index. A sharp increase in the VIX typically coincide with the market stress, of course. And then we are using the CBOE free month volatility index which is called VXV which is the same as the VIX but it's not built from the options which have 30 day maturity but on the options with a 90 day maturity. How does our strategy look like? So we have the SPI, the SPI ETF is the ETF that we will try to hold. We will try to build a very simple volatility hedge strategy. So we will hold 80% in the SPI index and then we will use the one day lag and we will use the difference between the VIX and VXV as a timing signal. So this is our benchmark strategy for hedging. Why we use it as a benchmark? Because I mean this is the strategy that's probably well known. There is a contango in the VIX market. Volatility which is shorter or nearer term is usually lower than implied volatility which is far away. So usually in like 80% or 90% of the time the VIX index is lower than the VXV index which is 90 day volatility. So 40 day implied volatility is usually smaller than 90 day implied volatility. But in case the 90 day volatility jumps, there is like very big stress in the market, short term correction. The VIX is higher than the VXV, this is a good signal to buy the hedge. So in this case we will buy the hedge, we will hedge some part of our portfolio. So this is our benchmark strategy. So we have a SPI portfolio which holds as equities 100% of the time. We have a performance volatility and charge ratio is 0 0.356. And in case we would like to hedge our portfolio, so to hold S&P 500 and in case there is a signal, so the VIX is higher than VXV, we will buy 20% of the hedge for VXE. We will have a little lower performance, lower volatility and uh, lower share ratio. As you can see, we are able to hedge some of the drawdowns in the market, like for example, COVID crisis or drawdowns during the Russia invasion into the Ukraine are lower. Also, the drawdowns during the global financial crisis are lower, but I mean, we are paying relatively a lot uh, for this kind of the hedge. So this is very naive, very simple hedge. It's often used, but you have to pay something. So you pay 4% from your performance to have the hedge. Of course, your drawdowns are approximately 30% or 40% lower, but I mean, still we are paying a the, we can definitely create the better hedge. So how we can create the better hedge? So we can draw expiration from the volatility hedge. So we will estimate what is the difference between the implied and realized volatility. So we will calculate the 10 day standard deviation of the actual SPI prices and compare that to 90 day average of the VIX. In case this standard deviation is lower than 90 day average of the VIX, what does it mean is that implied volatility is higher than the realized volatility and we are in a safe environment. The hedging via the volatility is probably expensive, so it doesn't make sense to hold the portfolio. But there is also the second check, so the VIX must be lower than a three-month average. We are 
employing our hedge only in case the realized volatility, so 10-day standard deviation, is higher than 90-day average of the weeks, plus the VIX itself is higher than three-month VIX. So in this case, we will allocate 20% of the portfolio to the VIX, and otherwise we will stay in the cash. This is better way how to hedge portfolio, and it would be significantly cheaper. There is also another idea, and the idea is that do not allocate just the 20% of the portfolio to the VIX, but allocate the percentage of the portfolio which is equal to the VIX itself. So it means if the VIX is too high or implied volatility is high, we will invest even more into the implied volatility. So these are like two strategies from the article itself, from the volatility edge, and we will test those two ideas and we will mix them with SPI to check out whether it has performed well, and we will also make the robustness test. So what is the sensitivity test we perform? So firstly, there is a moving average window over which you can average the VIX. So in the paper, the 90-day window is used, but we can check out what is the performance from 10 days until 120 days. That's the first idea. The second idea for the robustness test is to check the calculation of the standard deviation of the index itself. So in the paper, the 10-day deviation is used, but we can check from 5 days until 60 days. Here we have a performance. So what is the performance of the strategies when we move parameters? And here is the standard deviation, and here we have a sharp ratio. So what we can see is that firstly, there is a negative performance when we have a very long window for the calculation of the standard deviation. So I mean, anything over the 20 days, like 30, 40 or 60 days, is probably too much. So it's better to have the lower window for the calculation of the standard deviation. So when you calculate the realized volatility, it's better to have 5, 10 or 20 days, which is, I mean, very close to what we tried here in our previous article and when we tried to time the leverage ETFs. So 5 to 10 days for the calculation of the realized volatility is probably the best window. Now, regarding the moving average window for the weeks, there is not very big difference. I mean, 10 days probably a little low, but I mean from 20 days until approximately 90 days, that's probably the good window. And it's up to you if you would like to use a shorter window, which is performing a little better, or longer window 90 days, which is mentioned in the paper. I will probably use this combination, so 10-day standard deviation window for the calculation of the realized volatility and 20-day moving average for to smooth the VIX. And then I would compare those two numbers, and in case the realized volatility is higher than 20-day moving average the VIX, I will probably start hedging. One important note is that we are implementing our strategy with one-day execution lag because the VIX index is not known until the market is closed, so only the next day we can use calculate the moving average of the VIX. It doesn't have a very big impact whether you are using some intraday value of the VIX or you are having the one-day lag. Here is the performance of the strategy from the article with uh, using the five-day standard deviation or ten-day standard deviation. As we can see, I mean, there is not a significant difference. What is important is the sizing itself. So here we have a chart with the sizing. So as we can see, here we use the sizing and here we do not use the sizing. What is the sizing? So in case the standard deviation or realized volatility is higher than the implied volatility, we hedge the portfolio with the VIXI. However, in this case, we have the fixed 20% position in the VIXI and in this part, we have a position in the VIXI which is equal to the actual VIX value. So as we can see, it's significantly better to increase the position size in the, your hedge if the implied volatility is high. The higher the implied volatility is, the better is to have the higher position, which is, in my opinion, very, very surprising. So I did not expect this behavior and it really surprised me. Now, the question is, how does it look like when we mix those strategies together? So here we have the our benchmark strategy. So the SPI plus VIXI compared to VXV signal. So the naive hedge when we hold the position in the VIXI only when the VIX 30-day implied volatility is higher than the 90-day volatility, which is very often used. So we can see that we are underperforming. The curves are the strategies when we are holding the VIXI when the realized volatility is higher than the implied volatility. So we are not comparing two implied volatilities, but we are comparing the realized to implied volatility. So we can see that the performance is significantly better. And our performance is even better when we are scaling up our position by the VIX. So we are not using the 20% fixed position for the hedge, but we are increasing our hedge in case the volatility is higher. Here are the performance charts and they are, I mean, really, really nice and you are even making money during the time when there is stress, which is, I mean, quite surprising. So you are making money in 2008, you made the money in 2020, etc., etc. So what is the share ratio and what is the performance? So, I mean, the benchmark performance of SPI itself is 10%. The sharp ratio is 0.56. Diversify among three, four, five different signals. So I would definitely use five-day standard deviation, 10-day standard deviation, 20-day moving average of the VIX, 60-day moving average of the VIX, 90-day average of the VIX, for example, and I would mix them together so that 
your hedging decision is not built on just on one signal, you can easily pick multiple different uh, signal parameters from the table I calculated here. So you do not need just to pick the one, but you can, I mean, mix uh, multiple signals together. I would definitely diversify and use more of them. And I would definitely probably use volatility sizing. So it means I would employ more or higher position in the hedge when the VIX is higher. So not just fixed 20%, but definitely higher. It seems that it's a good idea to size your position in the hedge based on the VIX or volatility itself. So I hope that you like our article. I hope that you are now a little more experienced how to use the tail risk hedging, especially as the market is making new highs and there is a lot of the talk about AI bubble. I would think hard about employing tail risk in some variation in the portfolio. It can help you a lot. I mean, the next bear market, you may be surprised how it can save your portfolio from the big drawdown. So definitely I would recommend you to come to Quantpedia, read our article, test some of the strategies by yourself and employ them. And if you are interested to see more strategies and more volatility hedging strategies, go to Quantpedia and there is a one simple possibility. So I mean, if you go into the product page, the product page will load you the whole Quantpedia database with all of the strategies that we have in it. And there is one surprise, so there is a special field which is called the crisis hedge and you can use that special field to find out the strategies that can work as a crisis hedge. So we do not have just this strategy which is explained in our blog, but when you select the crisis hedge as a yes, it will give you over 150 strategies that can be used as a crisis hedge in your portfolio. So you do not need to rely on just on VIX itself, but there are more than 150 strategies that you can employ. But I will definitely employ some crisis hedge in the next three to six months. So thank you very much. I hope that you like this video and that you will join me in the next one and have a nice day. Are you interested? Then pick another video to learn more or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.